Hi YouTube! So today I'm actually behind the camera because I believe this is going to be the best way to show off my entire luxury jewelry collection. I've gotten a lot of questions about different pieces in my collection, different things that I enjoy, and I thought that it would just be easiest to make this video where I get to show them off. But my first attempt at filming this video, you couldn't see the pieces that well, and so I feel like getting me out of the frame really allows the jewelry to stand out. So hope that you have hit the red subscribe button down below and let's get into showing off some wonderful luxury jewelry pieces. So up first is going to be from David Yurman and I'm gonna move through different necklaces, bracelets, earrings, rings, all of that. But I wanted to start with some of my chunkier pieces and this is definitely my biggest one. So this is going to be the cable link necklace and I'll have the official name for all these pieces down in the text below, as well as links in the description to the ones that are still available. I absolutely love this piece. This is actually a very special piece to me, as it is an inherited piece. But one of the things that I really want to point out about this necklace is the super cool closure about it. So if I were to move this around as necklaces often turn, you really don't see a clasp. And that is because it's hidden, but the classic David Yerman charm is actually beside the ring where the link is. And so it's just a simple link on and off. And this is sterling silver mixed with gold, which is of course iconic to David Yerman. So here is yet a, another thicker piece from David Yerman. And this is mostly sterling silver, but on this particular band of the chain, it does have some gold links mixed in. Now, I feel like that this is a more elegant chunk compared to the previous necklace that I just showed from David Yerman. This has a lot of their iconic cables in it. So this has a super cool clasp and it's a squeeze and then it comes off and then just clips back together. So I think that is a super cool piece. Again, this is another inherited piece for me but I think that it's absolutely stunning. And as far as my thick necklaces go, this is probably to me my favorite and my most wearable. Now, next up is going to be another of my favorite thicker necklaces, and that is my Return to Tiffany toggle necklace. Now, this necklace does come in a couple of different versions, and this necklace always comes with the heart charm on it. My grandmother actually personalized this for me, and so they changed out the heart to this circle charm because the circle is more me. This also comes with the toggle or without the toggle. When it comes without the toggle, the necklace is going to still have that same chain, but the chain is going to go all the way around and then a big thick lobster clasp in the back. Now, in addition to the necklace version, there's also going to be versions that are in the bracelet form as well. And if I can get my mother to allow me to, I'm going to also insert a couple of clips showing her version with the heart as well as her heart bracelet. Continuing on with Tiffany, another one of my sterling silver necklaces from there is going to be my Tiffany key. Now the Tiffany keys are no longer made in sterling silver in this size. The only sterling silver keys that they do come to about half this size. Now you can absolutely find sterling silver keys on the resale market. And if I can, I will show my mother's key as she has was probably the most traditional of the Tiffany keys. If you haven't watched it yet, I do tell all about the story behind this Tiffany key in my sandwich story tag video, which I will link hopefully above and also in the description box below. Now, one last piece of sterling silver necklace wear from Tiffany is going to be my most recent piece of Tiffany and that is my 1837 pendant. It is called that because on the pendant, if it'll show up, this does say T and Co and it has 1837 going along it. And this is actually on both sides. So even if the necklace turns, it still has that same look. I really think that this is an extremely nice size in a necklace because it's not something that's going to overpower, but it does still give enough oomph while looking elegant. So I think that this is absolutely a wonderful piece of Tiffany if you are looking for something on the lower priced end. Switching back to David Yerman, this is going to be a, another piece of their sterling silver, but this is their sterling silver with a little bit of diamonds. So it may not show up on the camera, but there are diamonds on that little crossbar. And the thing that I think is neat about this pendant is that each of these rings actually moves independently. 
Um, now they stay stationary together, but this helps keep the piece laying really nicely on. Another thing that I want to note about most David Yerman pieces is that it does have two links where you can hook on different lengths of the necklace. So this is a little bit shorter and then it has about an inch more where you can lengthen it. That is one thing about Tiffany pieces is that you really don't have that versatility in length, but that is another thing to note about David Yearman. Now, if the Tiffany 1837 circle pendant wasn't up your alley and you want something with a bit of diamonds, I really think that this is a beautiful piece from David Yearman and is part of their circle collection. This does have cable as well as diamond paving and just the solid sterling silver. They also make versions of this that are in the mixed gold. Again, it does have the adjustable links in the back of the necklace. I think this is a wonderful choice if you're looking for something professional. It's actually what I wore in my professional headshots. And because it has the diamonds on it, I think it's a piece that can go perhaps slightly more dressy than the Tiffany one, um, but it can also be very casual at the same time. Now, this is going to be another inherited piece of mine. This is the bigger version of the circle pendant necklace that I just showed you. It does have more loops going around, and this particular one, it may not be showing up very well on the camera, but does have the gold. Now, the bigger version, what is super unique about it is its clasp. And let me take it off to show it to you. It has this pull string barrel clasp, and so you actually are able to pull it and lengthen or shorten the necklace. Let me see if I can show you that while it's hanging up. So I can pull this out, the necklace lengthens, and then I can pull these two strands and shorten it. This necklace will go very, very long. So if you want something that's going to be versatile, very, very versatile in terms of the length, this is a wonderful choice to go with from David Yearman. So this piece that I'm showing you now doesn't come as a necklace. This charm is independent and has a clasp where it can come off, be put on this chain or any other type of necklace. The chain itself is extremely long. And so again, this is a wonderful choice for someone wanting to have maybe different pendants with the same type of chain. They do make various charms. This charm is actually part of the Lexington collection and it is the one without the diamond. They make a version that is slightly shorter this direction, slightly longer up and down, and that has diamonds on these crossbars. Here's, and I think that this is a wonderful choice. They make a different necklace with this same type of charm, but the one with the diamonds and a thick chain that goes around that they sell as a set. They also sell the charms independently and the chain independently. I'll insert a picture of the chain that I think is beautiful, wonderful necklace on its own, and it's something that I would love to have so that I could switch out which chain I have this pendant on, depending on the length that I want it. Now, with this chain, it is not adjustable, so make sure to pay attention to that when looking at David Yearman chains. Now, the last of my long Yearman chains, this one is a shorter length, but it is actually a fully long chain. I can drop it down. You can see it's quite long. But if I pull this back up, the chain itself is very unique because it is more of a gunmetal finish as opposed to that shiny silver of the last chain. Additionally, this is a cross charm that comes off, so you can put any type of charm or no charm at all in the chain. And then this is just a little sweet green charm. This was actually a gift for me from my first master's graduation from my grandmother-in-law and was my first piece of David Yearman. And so I love the green, my birthstone is emerald. It also happens to be the month I graduated. And this is the crossover cross. Um, it does have that X of gold. So if that's something that you're interested in, I think this is a really beautiful option for a cross that's a bit more modern than what a lot of people normally pick. Now, if you want a bit more of a traditional cross, and I am sorry that this velvet is extremely dusty. It lives at my parents' house with costume jewelry on it and I just stole it back to use this for this video, so it is very dusty. But this is a different charm. It is still a crossover charm because it does have the gold, but this one also has the diamonds in it, and it's much smaller in size than the other cross, so it's a much more dainty look. Now, this did come with the chain, and that chain, again, has adjustable length, so it can go there or here on this one. 
So if you're wanting a more delicate cross, this is a really pretty option as it does come with both the gold and the diamonds and it's very, very affordable for a piece that has gold and diamonds on it. Now, this necklace is the Tiffany Ziegfeld Pearl Necklace. This is a five to six millimeter pearl. So it's very dainty and it's also a 14 inch strand. So where it hits on me is actually right about my collarbone, which is a really good length for anything that has even just the slightest bit of V to it, or it's just a solid regular crew neckline. It hangs very well. This is also a good size of pearl. It's not so big that it looks fake, but it's also not so tiny that it looks like it could just be pulled off with a really easy snap. Now, the Ziegfeld pearls are really the pearl line that Tiffany does most. I think that these are wonderful. They are a very pretty, just slightly off-white color, and they have a really nice iridescence to them. I got these as my college graduation gift from my parents, and so I think that this is a perfect length necklace for your first pearl necklace if you don't have one at all. Now, this pearl necklace is actually not what it appears. It is actually one very long strand. So I can shorten these, I can lengthen them. A lot of times I wear this either twisted four times or three in a longer, having a short middle and long length. Now, I do really like these pearls. I think they're very beautiful. As you see though, the more that you layer it up, the more twisted that this pearl will get. And so I think that that's something to note. It is, given how long this strand is, is massively long. I will try to show you a picture of how long it is. But given how long that this strand is, it's probably very, very well priced. And it gives you versatility in how you wear this necklace because you can either layer it up like this, wear it very long, wear it with multiple different layers at different lengths. And I really like that versatility. Now, if you don't want the versatility and you want something that's going to be more stationary on your neck without having to wrap and unwrap it all the time, I would go with this necklace and that is the Torsade Pearl Necklace. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's probably the piece from Tiffany that if I could only add one more piece, it's the Tiffany piece I would add. And it has all different layers of pearls in it. Now, back to this pearl necklace, this is going to be the seven to eight millimeter pearl. So this is thicker than the previous necklace that I just showed you. So now we're gonna move to bracelets. This is the first one that I wanna show you guys. It is sterling silver with gold, I'm trying to show you different angles of it. And this one is an inherited piece. It is no longer made, but you see the sculptural detail in this piece a lot. Um, now, this closure on the back does not change. So when I do go to take it off, it is a little bit of a pull and a struggle. But this is a medium sized. If I were picking it for myself, I might have gone with the small, except for this closure, since it doesn't move. These are two of the more classic cable bracelets. The crossover has the gold X on it with the closure on the back. Now these will scrunch down or expand so I can get them off easily. And then of course, the one on the right is my favorite bracelet and that is the David Yurman Classic Cable Pearl. It does have the gold beside the pearl. They now also make a version with rose gold on it. And all types of different color stones come in the Classic Cable range as well as different thicknesses. I'm wearing a size small and I believe this is the five millimeter thickness. And I think that these are absolutely wonderful, perfect bracelets to stack together or wear on their own. Now, if the classic cable isn't your thing, this is another piece from David Yerman. This is the link bracelet, and it has a hidden link closure, just as that necklace did that I showed you initially. Now, this is the all sterling silver version. As you can see, it alternates between plain links and the cable links. Now, the one thing that I will say about this bracelet is hard to get on and off by yourself because of the hidden closure link, but it's very beautiful and they do all types of different widths as well as mixed gold and solid gold in this bracelet. One more bracelet to show you, and that is going to be my Louis Vuitton bracelet. I don't believe this exact one is made anymore. It does have the Vachetta leather as well as the small monogram going around the sides. The lock does say Louis Vuitton Paris on it, and then it just clips here to open, pull apart, and then it snaps back into place. 
So just wanted to show that really quick, even though it's not necessarily luxury jewelry, it is from a luxury fashion house. I also just realized I totally forgot to show my two favorite necklaces from David Yerman. And that's going to be, first off, this crossover necklace, which I think is super cool. One, because you have one side that can be more gold, still showing silver, or you flip it around and you get more of the silver cable, less of the gold. Again, it has the adjustable links. So love, love, love this. It's probably my most worn of all of my necklaces. My other necklace I was actually wearing while filming this, and that is my G initial necklace. Now, there are multiple different initial necklaces from David Yerman. This is the gold, so it is going to be the smallest one, and it does have diamonds in the initial. The version that is sterling silver, this is actually smaller than a dime. The version that is sterling silver with the diamonds is going to be about nickel size. Then they also have a sterling silver version, again, about nickel size, that is going to be without the diamonds, so therefore going to be less expensive. Now, before moving in to rings, I, of course, have to talk about my Cartier watch that comes in its wonderful red box. This is going to be the Cartier tank watch in the small model in the steel. They do make it in a mixed metal as well as a gold. Those are substantially more expensive than this watch. This is going to be one of the most affordable as well as one of the most iconic watches. This is the Friend Case Tank Watch, and I absolutely love it. It is extremely light and comfortable. If you've looked at luxury watches like Rolex, you'll know how heavy those are, and this is not that way at all. It also has a very long warranty, even including the battery for eight years. So that's something to note in that this is a watch that as long as you wear it and take good care of it, you'll be able to wear the rest of your life. Now, it should go without saying that I obviously would not be wearing all these rings on my finger at the same time, but I felt like this was going to be the easiest way to talk about them. So first up on my thumb, I have another inherited piece, and this is going to be a ring that is no longer available, though there are some similar ones and you can find it pre-loved. This one has diamonds as well as the sterling silver and the gold band running in the middle. It is a very thick ring, but extremely comfortable. The, ba the back side is just sterling silver. Now, moving on to probably my favorite ring. This one is again sterling silver. It's part of the Renaissance collection. And again, no longer available. It is an inherited piece, but this has pave or pave diamonds, depending on how you choose to pronounce it, running all along the sterling silver and on the two ends. Once again, another inherited ring that is no longer available. A David Yearman ring, and this one I think would be really good for men as like a band. And this just has lines of the cable pattern running along it with sterling silver bounding it. Now this last ring is my only ring from Tiffany. It is part of the Tiffany it is part of the Tiffany 1837 collection, having Tiffany and Co. as well as the 1837 stamp on it. And I love this ring. It is concave, so this ring cannot be sized at all. And that is important to note is that some of these rings cannot be sized. I believe this one is the only one that can. So make sure to ask those questions if you're someone whose hand fluctuates a lot with their ring size. I do have one pair of earrings from a luxury house, and that is going to be the David Yerman uh, crossover earrings. So this has gold with the sterling silver cable. These are extremely lightweight, but if the small size is not for you, they do make plenty of other big versions. Now, forget this last piece, it needs to be polished. But the last thing that I have are my Return to Tiffany Oval cufflinks. These are no longer made, so again, a discontinued piece. But these are really, really cool cufflinks, something for a man or for a woman who wears something that they need cufflinks for. I have one shirt that I needed these for and my husband very wonderfully sought them out and found them for me and I'm very very happy that he did. So that wraps up my luxury jewelry collection. I will be doing a collection showcasing men's luxury jewelry very soon and I hope that you will make sure to be subscribed for that as well as make sure to check out my three videos talking about Tiffany, Cartier, and David Yearman brand history. Hope you have a great rest of your day YouTube. Bye!